Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your presence, Jesus. We bless you. We bless you. We pray these things in the name of Jesus. Are you thankful for his presence? Come on, you can be seated. Before you're seated, though, high five someone and say, you look real good right now, yo. You can be seated. Oh, man, what a blessing. What an honor. Are you guys enjoying this so far? Come on. Well, I'm Zach. Uh, I'm from Las Vegas. I pastor a church called Encounter Church Las Vegas. And uh, so most of you know Las Vegas as Sin City. We have renamed it Revival City. We call our city what God calls it. Come on. We name it Grace City, uh, Sun City, Save City, Saint City. Amen. And so we're just so glad to, uh, I, you know, when, uh, when dad asked me to be a part of this, um, I was uh, very excited and very honored. But I felt like, you know, a small time chef and some top world chef, Tom Colicchio or Somebody like that is like, hey, I'm having a party. I want you to cook a meal for it. I'm like, uh, for real, man? <laughs> I'm going to make a meal for this thing. So uh, I'm really honored to bring the word this morning. And uh, I'm going to be sharing on identity. Uh, how many know that we need to know who we are? Yeah. And so let's, uh, let's just start um, uh, by reading a scripture out of Romans. And we're going to pray real quick. And then we're going to go for it. Amen. Romans 8, 26 in the Passion Translation. And in a similar way, the Holy Spirit, would you just say Holy Spirit, Spirit. takes hold of us in our human frailty to empower us in our weakness. For example, at times we don't even know how to pray uh, or know the best things to ask, but the Holy Spirit rises up within us to super intercede on our behalf, pleading to God with emotional sighs too deep for words. Can you say amen? Amen. Would you pray with me? Father, thank you for these awesome men. We yield our hearts. We say yes to you together. And most of all, we thank you for your presence, Papa. Thank you that you kiss our gatherings with your love and with your presence. Teach us Lord, to be sensitive to the moving of your spirit. Would you lift your hands with me and just say, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. I love this verse, and and I want to talk to you uh, uh, this this session about your identity. Uh, Man, I I don't know about you, but I, I have... I wasn't really raised in the church. I got saved when I was 17, and so I didn't really know the gospel. Uh, But I started going to a church, and it was like behavior modification at the core, sin management. And how many know that 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 like that doesn't really produce a lot of fruit? It can kind of help you walk a little bit along the way. But what I've learned is that the real issue is not about trying to modify my behavior, but learning who I really am. And, uh, and that discovery has been so beautiful. And, and even as a church, we've been pastoring for 10 years. Um, we've just been on this journey of just discovering who God is and in turn discovering who we are. Um, and I love this verse because, you know, we talk about the Holy Spirit. How many go to a church that is spirit filled? Come on. And we love the Holy Spirit. And I believe, thank you for the 14 claps. Come on, somebody. I, we really need to learn corporate sensitivity to the Spirit of God. But even in our charismatic circle, sometimes we attribute the Holy Spirit to just giving us a few goosebumps and giving us some gifts that make us feel better about ourselves, which really isn't the reason for the gifts. <laughs> but like, it's like, oh, Holy Spirit. Oh, I want to experience the Holy Spirit. But the deep work of the Spirit, I love this verse that says he helps us in our weaknesses. Is there anybody in the house that can say, I got weakness? Raise your hand. Okay, did you not just raise your hand? Raise your hand if you didn't. Your weakness is lying. So we all have areas of struggle. There's conflict, right? Now, growing up, one of my areas of conflict or struggle 
I, I wrestled 103 as a freshman. I was a little dude, man. I got picked on. Uh, you know, we lived in this area in Las Vegas. Um, Las Vegas has little pockets that are, you know, pretty ghetto and, um, you know, the strip in different areas. And I actually lived on the strip as a teenager, like the worst place to live. Everything is around, right? And uh, I got radically saved in that time of my life. But I lived in a place called Crack Alley. That's where you don't want to live. <laughs> like, if you're moving to a neighborhood called Crack Alley, say no to crack, Right. And, and so I'm in this area, and I go to 7-Eleven. This is just a little story about conflict, something I struggled with. And these dudes surrounded me, and th- these guys were about to jump me. I was wearing purple pants. I was kind of a cross between a gangster, a stoner, and a skater. That was like my identity, right? I didn't know who I was. <laughs> I'm like, who do I identify with? And, and so I have purple pants on, and these dudes come out. And they're like, oh, you Grape Street Crip? And I'm like, I'm like, long hair. I'm like bro, I just got high, man. I'm like, this is my old life, right? Okay, just keep it clear. <laughs> I don't do that anymore. And, and so these dudes surround me. I'm like, all right, they're, they're about to jump me. Now, we're with a couple people, um, and, and they noticed what was happening. And uh, I looked around, and they were gone. I'm like, thanks, friends. <laughs> so in my mind, I'm like, all right, you know, I'm a scrapper, like I've got kicked out of three different high schools for fighting, ditching, all that stuff, and, and I'm like, but the way this looks right now, I'm going to bolt, like this is not going to be fun, so I bolted, and uh, my friends had bolted long before that, thanks a lot, I still need deliverance from that, and, uh, and so pray for me, trying to forgive them, it was many, many years ago. So here's what I did. I ran up to my apartment complex where I live, and I started calling out fake names. John, David, Joey. And this dude that was chasing me was like, and he ran. Because it was like four on one, right? Hey, got to improvise, man. It worked. Now, another story, really powerful. You mind if I just say a couple stories? There's another time these three dudes are messing with me, and I just wasn't having it, man. I'm like... At one time I ran, I ain't going to run this time. And so I'm like, these guys are messing with me. And so I just, I started scrapping with these three dudes. At first, it looked like I was doing good. Psh, cracked one in the head. Broke my pinky. It still hurts. It didn't heal right. And, and I'm fighting these dudes. And then it just didn't work out too well. I think I tripped over one. Then all of a sudden, they're about to curb check me. Do you guys know what that is? Now nah, it got real. I mean, this was conflict. This was defeat. And in this moment, this was, my kids were very young. I actually only had two at the time. I have five kids now. Um, and, uh, and I remember this moment. I'm like, dude, this is not good. You ever get yourself in a situation, you're like, okay, why did I do this? I decided to step up, right? But it was not the right kind of step up. And, <laughs> and all of a sudden, I hear this voice. He's a father! It was my wife. She ran up, and the Lord reminded me of this story. And he said, you remember when your wife said that? He said, the Holy Spirit does the same thing. He speaks to your identity in the midst of conflict and defeat. And the Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. He speaks to our identity. He doesn't, you know, like my wife could have said, I just called the cops. That would have taken like 10 minutes for the cops to get there at least, right? If you're in Crack Alley, 20 minutes, but I wasn't there. But she didn't say that. She said, he's a father. And immediately these guys were like, and they just stopped. There was authority in her voice. It was like this lioness, and it, was, it resounds of how the Spirit works in our lives. The Holy Spirit doesn't just, you know, make us feel good and, and praise God for the manifest presence. Praise God for the gifts of the Spirit. But there's a deeper work of the Spirit where the Spirit tells us who we really are. Can you say amen? amen. I love 1 Corinthians 13, verse 11 and 12 in the NLT. It's really powerful. Uh, when I was a child, I spoke and thought and reasoned as a child. That reminds me of the story I just told you. But when I grew up, I put away childish things. Check this. Now we see things imperfectly like puzzling reflections in a mirror 
But then we will see everything perfect with perfect clarity. Uh, all that I know is now partial and incomplete, but then I will know everything completely just as God knows me completely. The Apostle Paul says it's like we're looking into a mirror and it's puzzling. And I, I brought something. And, you know, I love how the Holy Spirit works, like speaking through people, the testimony we just heard last night. Uh, but I brought something with me, and it's just the mirror I carry around uh, because I got to groom this beard, right? And uh, I put like 18 products in it. No, I'm just kidding. Can you imagine? And I, I packed it, and I checked the bag, and look what happened, man. I was so, that's not really, I, this is already prepared like that. I'm just playing. It's an illustrated sermon, guys. Come on. But I believe that sometimes in our, our Christian walk, like we know the Bible, we've been saved, we speak in tongues, like we, we, we've got it down, we know the word, and, but we still behold ourselves in something like this. And it distorts who we really are. Like we look at this and, and we, it, it's, we look into it uh, when we are preparing for our day. And all of these fractures can represent so many things in our life because we ask the question and we usually, unfortunately, don't know the answer. We ask the question, who am I? Can you ask that right now? Who am I? You ever ask yourself, like, who am I? I mean, there's times even as a, a pastor in ministry, I've wrestled with things and I've looked in the mirror. I'm like, who am I? I, I love the the spirit of, of humility and vulnerability and transparency because when we let the light in, there's freedom. And, and, you know, when we talk about messages like this, it's not just for the guys that just got saved, man. Usually it's for the ones that have been saved like 30 plus years. Come on, somebody. And we look in this mirror and these fractures could represent mistakes, past sins, uh, not knowing our value, our significance, bad theology, God's a mean judge. Every, every illustration we can think of in the Bible is a mean courtroom judge and the second coming and everything's judgment, 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 judgment. And we don't even know God is a father. I mean, it could, these cracks could be deep wounds of rejection, uh, abandonment, hello, abuse, not being embraced, not having affection for, from a dad or a mom or, or maybe a wasted life. We look in the mirror like, man, I wasted years of my life. And we think that it's unredeemable, like God can't redeem the time or God can't restore all things. And it literally shapes how we see ourselves. And eventually it's almost like it becomes scars. And we don't even need to look in the mirror because we're so used to seeing this, this fractured face that we think that's who we really are. No wonder. And, and maybe, maybe these fractures are like, you're a sinner. Well, I've heard the message, you know, I'm a sinner saved by grace, right? Well, you were, but who are you now? The Bible says you're a saint. Hello? You're a son being transformed by grace. And grace just isn't mercy. Grace is divine enablement. Grace is the nature, the power, the presence, the love of God flowing from his heart every second of the day to you so you can rise up, come on, and reign in life. And not just be some person. That, and we use these, these cracks as excuses to stay in defeat and failure. But the Spirit of God doesn't just make us feel good on Sundays. He speaks to our identity. We have to listen to what the Spirit is saying because he's calling out our true identity. I mean, all these things, like you're an addict. You're an alcoholic. It's just who you are. Your dad was an alcoholic. You're an alcoholic. Well, you're just a fighter. You're feisty. You, you know, you're always, you have a bad temper. You're just angry. You're going to stay like that. Fractured mirror. You're an idiot. You're a loser. Listen, I didn't, I, I got held back in second grade. A lot of people don't know this about me. Um, I don't like to dwell on it, but it's part of my testimony. I, uh, I went through all sorts of learning disability classes, and um, they, they thought, they didn't know if it was hearing or, or what was going on with me. When I got saved, I got kicked out of so many schools. When I got saved when I was 17, I would go to a Bible study, and they would ask me to read scriptures, and I read at a first grade level. I thought I was stupid. I had no idea what God had, 
how he'd wired my mind. Like, here's a little embarrassing story. I'm reading a scripture out of Galatians, and I accidentally pr pronounced Gentile genital. <laughs> like, that's the worst Bible study ever. <laughs> Everyone laughed. I'm like, what are you laughing at, man? Did I read it wrong? What's a genital? I didn't even know what a genital was. <laughs> that's a true story, bro. <laughs> I mean, stupid, man. Oh, I mean, no, I'm smart. Put down the fractured mirror, Zach. We see ourselves with the labels that we've been labeled. The tags, the arrows. Recently, I was ministering at a church in Las Vegas, uh, this church that we're mentoring, this pastor I'm pouring into. Beautiful church, man, thriving, on fire church. And the Lord highlights the worship leader. And he's just so anointed, man. I mean, the guy's just ushering in the manifest presence, hosting and doing a beautiful job. And, and I saw all these arrows in his back and in, in his side and in his front, just arrows of words and labels and, and, and people just saying things uh, about him that are not true. And I begin to pray for him. And man, the, God was just removing these arrows. Uh, a week later, we have a meeting with their team. Our worship pastor literally gives him some of the same prophetic words. He had no clue. But the fractured mirror could be labels. They could be all the things that maybe others have said about us and then we start believing about ourselves. Sometimes, unfortunately, we empower these fractures. When really community, the church, men of God, women of God, family, we are created, fathers, mothers, we are created to tell each other who we really are. Yeah. Not empower the fracture. I, Larry was just preaching on words of honor to our wives. I literally, I bumped John. I'm like, all right, just give the altar call. It had been five minutes. Like, I want to honor my bride. I want to honor my wife. I've been married 20 years, man. I have the most beautiful wife and kids. I am so stinking blessed. And there's so much power in our words, but we are called to speak truth in life, to answer the question rightly, who we really are. Can you say amen? amen. I want to I'm going to bring my son on stage uh, to help me. My oldest son right here, David. David, would you stand up? Uh, David is incredible. Just come up right up here. Now, I, I know you don't really need this because you're a pretty boy. Come on, somebody. This is a handsome young man, dude. We were in the Philippines and uh, just stand right there, son. We're in the Philippines, and we're walking through this mall. We're ministering at this mega church that's, that meets in a mall in Manila. This church has just exploded from the inner city. This is just a few weeks ago. David's carrying my guitar, and some guy's like, Justin Bieber. <laughs> <laughs> so, listen, there's a little more to it. And then I mentioned that to the whole church. All the girls after the service are like, oh, selfies. David's like, Dad, I felt so famous. My son is absolutely incredible, though, man. I have the most blessed kids. So, David, I want you to just, just hold the mirror up. Now, I want you to picture this. Sometimes this is the scenario. Like, let's say I'm a father figure or a parental figure, and, and the, my words begin to damage how he sees himself. I mean, I think to one degree or another, we might have great parents, but we could all identify we could identify with that. And then what happens is after a while, look at yourself in the mirror, David. After a while, if you look at yourself in that fractured mirror long enough, you begin to just live in confusion about who you really are. Yeah, just step up in the light. Step in the light so you can be healed, bro. It's prophetic. Come on, somebody. <laughs> I, man, I, I really feel like it's important that we understand the Spirit's work in our life. Uh, it reminds me of Ephesians 1 where Paul it's actually in the early church, Ephesians 1 is a Trinitarian worship song. It's a Trinitarian hymn, and it ends to the praise of his glory. It talks about the Father, then it talks about the Son, the praise of his glory. Then it talks to the Spirit, and it says the praise of his glory. And when he talks about the Spirit, he talks about, he uses this word Erebon. It, it's a word that we use, down payment or guarantee, or even it could be used as like a ring, like a signet ring or an engagement ring. But how many know you've been given an inheritance by the Spirit of God deposited inside you. And I wonder sometimes proverbially or metaphorically if we kind of waste that inheritance because we don't realize the deep work of the Spirit. It reminds me of the prodigal son. Maybe the story is represented that way where the father 
was supposed to give him inheritance when, you know, when he dies. And the son says, I want it now, which in the first century context, that's like saying, Dad, you're dead to me. I want my inheritance now. Now, how many could say the prodigal son, he didn't know who he was, right? But after a while, my son, if I'm, if, if I'm as a father figure, whoever, and I'm speaking, he is confused about his identity. But something happens in the prodigal son story, and I want to just talk about it briefly before I close, because it's so profound. In Luke 15, many of you are familiar with the story. Um, to me, it's the gospel. It is the good news. It's, it's what we all need. And it's not written for backslidden Christians. It exemplifies the heart of the Father. I think, I think we could read it our entire life as Christian men and still get greater revelations of the Father's love. We don't know our value, our significance. We don't know who we are. We're, we're trapped in this fractured world. It's almost like we look in this mirror so much that we now see everything through this lens. It becomes a, a window into our reality. Everyone else looks fractured. Now the people we love, we don't know who they are. We don't value them for what they really are. And the prodigal son story, verse 20 of Luke 15, many of you know it, um, says he arose and came to his father. But while he was a great way off, now I, I'm just going to do this, so uh, let's say that David is the prodigal son, my son David, and I'm the father. Now, start coming home, son. Just come home. Come home. I just stop a little bit further. Now, spin around and dance. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, I, I get distracted sometimes, guys. I don't, sometimes my thoughts are just, bleh, bleh, I don't know. Pray for me. Spirit, help me. Now, the Bible says this, while he, saw, he was looking, the father was looking, the father was looking, the father was waiting, and when he saw him, the Bible says he ran. I'm not going to run, but let's just pretend I am. And he ran. Oh, that's nice. But in the first century context, old men didn't run. Jesus was exemplifying the extravagant love of God. It's so much greater than you can imagine. So the father, the Bible says he runs and he kisses him, kisses on the neck. Kiss it. I still kiss my son. I don't care. I do it in front of all of his friends. On the lips. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> I'm one of those dads that just says horrible things. I drop my daughters off at the mall and there's all these kids around. I'm like, hey, uh, Sarah, did you take your diarrhea medicine? Now, they're so used to it, they're like, yeah, dad. And they just walk inside. They don't even. So, back to the prodigal son. Apparently, this was a comedy session. I don't know. The, the father runs and meets him. Now, in the first century, uh, it's possible the community could have shunned him and said, no, we know what you did to your father. This was a statement. The message of reconciliation last night, when there's reconciliation this way, there's always reconciliation this way. Matter of fact, jump forward, the fatted calf, a fatted calf didn't just feed a couple people some good steak. It fed a community, probably about 100 people. In other words, they all came to the table to break bread, to meet heart to heart, face to face. That's reconciliation. The Father's love always impacts us that way. When I've been forgiven, oh, I can release, I can forgive, I can love. Uh, just a side note. But the father ran. It was unheard of. Old men didn't run in that day. Brendan Manning said something so powerful in a book called The Furious Longing of God. If you've never read it, I highly encourage it. He said, if you took all the love of the best mothers and fathers who've ever lived in the course of human history, all their goodness, kindness, patience, fidelity, wisdom, tenderness, strength, and love, and united all those qualities in one single person, hear this, that person's love would only be a faint shadow of the furious love and mercy in the heart of God the Father addressed to you and I right now in this moment. Now, it's interesting. The son comes home and he starts talking. We always have something to say, right? In the presence of God. Sometimes I think God just wants to love us. 
I think those are the most powerful moments of transformation. For me as a father, sometimes the most pleasurable moment for me as a father is when I just get to love my kids. They fidget and they move around. We always we got stuff to pray and say and do. And God's like, would you just let me love you? Just abide in my love. Those are transforming moments. So the son says, Father, I've sinned against heaven in your sight. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. And then the father says, hey, to his servants, bring out the best robe. Then he goes on. Now, I want you to catch this. This is profound. The son pre-rehearses this prayer. And he says, I'm going to go to my father, and I'm going to say I've sinned against heaven and earth. I'm not worthy to be your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. Now catch this. That's verse 19b. But in this verse, the Bible says that the father interrupted half of that orphan-minded prayer. Now, yes, we're servants. I love the theme. We're talking about this servant, but we are sons that serve. We are not hired servants. We are bought servants. And we are sons that serve. And so many times we serve from an orphan place and we need to serve as sons because we're sons and daughters of God. What a revelation. And the father says, bring out the best robe. You know whose robe that was? Papa's robe. I guarantee you the best robe was the father's robe. It was royal. It was beautiful. He didn't even clean them up. This dude was eating pig's food, man. Father didn't even come as you are. Come on in. I'm going to hug you. I'm going to kiss you. Give me the best robe. Put a ring on his finger, shoes on his feet. Oh, man, the Father's love. Behold the love of the Father that we should be called sons and daughters, children of the living God. 1 John 3, 1. Now, listen, I was saved and in ministry. And for me, I had one of these moments. I felt invisible. I felt overlooked. I'm still beholding this mirror, and I'm trying to minister to God's people. And then I met a man named Larry Titus who showed me the Father's love. I'm telling you, man, I can't even talk about it without tearing up because it's so real. We have no idea if we would just capture the heart of God for humanity and people around us. We could change the world. If we could have these moments with God and know who we really are, we could change the world. Love, the love of God. Thank you for hanging up here. You can't leave yet. Just stay right here, son. Here's what I've learned. The father doesn't come up here. Man, you guys have no idea. This kid is so brilliant and anointed. This kid was praying over people in the Philippines. They're like, push, push, falling out under the power of God. And he's like, shaka, la, 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 la. And like, I mean, just fireball, dude. This, he's a world changer. He's a world changer. I'm so proud of you. God doesn't just heal some of these cracks. Well, just get rid of a few here and there. Oh, man. He gives us a whole new mirror. Put that stinking mirror down, son. This thing was crushed under the broken body of Jesus on the cross, man. 2,000 years ago, We've been crucified with Christ. It's no longer us who live, but we live, come on, by faith, the faith of the Son of God. Jesus, give us this revelation. God gives us a new heart. Come on, he makes all things new. And now when we say, who am I? I want to read Romans chapter 8. You can be seated. Would you give my son a hand? Come on. I'm almost done. And I'm doing good on time. Romans chapter 8, verse 14 through 16 in the Passion Translation. The mature children of God are those who are moved 
by the impulses of the Holy Spirit. Now listen, what the Spirit's work, the Spirit's work in our life. The Holy Spirit reveals to us who Jesus is, and Jesus always reveals the heart of his Father. It's this circle, this divine dance, this perichoresis. It's the word describing the Trinity, the flow, the, the divine dance of the Trinity. And so Paul is emphasizing the work of the Spirit, and he says, you didn't receive the spirit of religious duty leading you back into the fear of never being good enough. But you've received the spirit of full acceptance. Listen, can I just tell you something real quick? Look at me. You are totally accepted by the Father right now. I mean, like, just, he's not going to let you go. You're stuck in daddy's love. He's going to love the crap out of you, too. He's going to love it all out of you. It's who he is. He's a fire, burning fire. It's the Spirit's work in our life. And, and now we've been fully accepted. We're in the family of God. And we'll never feel orphaned. He rises up within us. Our spirits join to Him. Our spirit bears witness with His Spirit. And we hear, listen, the words of tender, or, or we, we say the words, Beloved Father, for the Holy Spirit makes God's fatherhood real to us makes God's fatherhood real to us. The Spirit makes God's fatherhood real to us. And he goes on and he says, he whispers to our innermost being, you are God's beloved child. You know what heals this identity crisis? The love of the Father. That's the gospel. Resting in the Father's arms. Resting in the Father's arms. That's the good news. The, the flavor of faith is rest and trust. So we ask the question, who am I? And guess what the Father says? You're my beloved son in whom my soul delights. And we realize that even our Christian life, that I believe that our very heartbeat at the core of who we are and our deep in our spirit, our spirit has been made alive unto God. That igniting, that spark, that life is the rhythm of God's echoing voice. You're my son. You're my son. You're my son. And even in the midst of conflict, defeat, failure, sin, put the mirror down, pick up the right mirror. There comes a time in your life you have to look in the mirror and say, you're made in God's image. We heard it last night. I had brought these mirrors all the way from Las Vegas. God spoke to him in prison, said, look in the mirror and say, you're awesome. How many are thankful that God has taken care of the broken mirror and he's given us a new heart, a new spirit. Come on, new DNA. We're washed, we're regenerated, renewed by the Holy Spirit. There's no sin that can out -sin the blood of Jesus. We're clean, come on. We're new creation, old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Do you believe it? Come on, run into the Father's arms and let him shape your true identity. Let him answer the question, who am I? Lay the fractured mirror down. It has been crushed under the feet of Jesus. Come on, trust in what he's done. Rest in the Father's arms. Let His love permeate your entire being until all you hear is the Father's voice. You are my beloved Son. I remember Larry years ago. I'm so proud of you. Why? He saw who I was. He say, I'm behind you 100%. Why? I don't understand. I felt so blessed. For years of being overlooked in my anointing, intimidating my leaders. Somebody who's not intimidated but said, I'm going to cultivate that. A father. How we need fathers. How we need the father's love. And that's what poured through him over 12 years ago. I got to pick him up from the airport. My church culture, if you get to pick the man of God up from the airport, you're big time, man. I'm like, I'm picking the man of God up. I got to spend time and I am so grateful. I'm so grateful. Thank you for showing me the Father's love. Absolutely changed my life. Changed our ministry. It's changing Las Vegas. It's changing Las Vegas. One life, 
Loving one life can change a city. Come on, change a community. Change, come on, racial reconciliation. Remove walls, ethnic hatred. Because of what he's done. I want you to do this right now. Close your eyes. I'm closing. Close your eyes. I want you to lift your hands and pray and say, thank you, Holy Spirit, for telling me who I am. You speak straight to my identity. And I want you to do this as a prophetic act. I want you to grab that fractured mirror. And I want you to run it down here and lay it on the altar and pick up the right one in the spirit right now. Just quickly come. And as you come, I pray, just come all the way down. Come on, the altars are open. Come down. And as you come down, you can go back to your seat. But I want you to receive the, the crash, the love of God right now. Just let it crash into you, the love of the Father. Lord, we just come in right now, burdens lifted. Every lie, every label. Shambrakate soreke. Hear the voice of the Father over your life. Lay that thing down and don't ever pick it up again. See yourself in the mirror that God gives you. Says, I delight in you. You're my son. I love you. You can do anything. You're amazing. You're valuable. The blood of Jesus proves you're valuable. It proves you're valuable. Amen. Come on and thank God as you come. I want you to pray in the Holy Spirit. Come on, lift your voices and thank God for his love. Thank God for his love. Amen. 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 Praise God. Let's applaud the Holy Spirit. Let's applaud the Son. Let's applaud the Father. And let's thank God for Zach Waxler, the anointing of God, incredible anointing of God. Incredible anointing of God. When you embrace what he just taught, it changes you. When you receive the profit, and the reward of the profit is transformation on you. How many receive it today? No more crack mirror. No more crack mirror. I'm awesome and I can't even help it. Tell your neighbor I'm awesome and I can't even help it. You look like your father.